Hi, my name is Alyosha and I'm a postdoc at Dynamic Vision and Learning Group here at Technical University of Munich. Today I'll be presenting our recent CVPR paper called How to Train Your Deep Multi-Object Tracker. So to navigate around the world, mobile robots need to detect and track objects. And nowadays, this is usually done via tracking by detection paradigm. Here, the idea is to train object detectors for specific target classes, and then at the inference time, we apply detectors to images independently, and then we link these detections across time. And this way, we obtain object tracks. So in the past, our community was mainly focusing on finding strong, preferably globally optimal methods to solve this association problem and on handcrafting affinity measures that can be used as association cues. But from 2015 onwards, community actually turned towards leveraging representational power of deep learning. I'm sure that you heard about state-of-the-art methods such as Tractor and MPN Track in previous lectures. So to train such deep multi-object trackers, the question is, of course, what loss function should we optimize? And of course, loss functions should ideally strongly correlate with evaluation measures used to evaluate multi-object tracking performance. So let's shortly recap the, the evaluation measures that you use for, um, for this task. So the most widely used measures are MOTA and MOTP. In case of MOTA, multi-object tracking accuracy, we penalize false positives, false negatives, and ID switches. In the uh, case of uh, mode P, we evaluate the overlap between track predictions and ground truth boxes and normalize this by the number of true positives. Now, the question is, how can we compute these quantities? So to compute this, we actually need to establish which track predictions correspond to which object tracks. And this is actually not trivial because ground truth objects that are represented by dash dashed boxes here in this visualization can actually be covered by multiple predictions. So it's not clear anymore which matches to which. <clears throat> um, still, we need to establish a unique and globally optimal matching between these two sets. So during the evaluation, this is posed as bipartite graph matching problem, and it's based on box overlap between these two sets. The good news is that globally optimal solution that runs in polynomial time exists. So this is the Hungarian algorithm. And once this matching is established, we can actually simply count true positives, false, no false positives, and false negatives. And by looking at two frames, we can also count number of ID switches. So basically, this means that MOTA and MOTP can be expressed as a function of the distance and assignment matrices established between this set, these two sets. Okay, so it seems now that we have all the ingredients to come up with the multi-object tracking loss. But uh, let's have a look again at the big picture here. So at the, so at the start, we have results produced by multi-object trackers, so object tracks. Um, based on these tracks and the ground truth information, we can compute distance matrix. And then if then we can use Hungarian algorithm to compute optimal assignment matrix using Hungarian algorithm. The problem here is that this means that computing MOTA and MOTA P relies on Hungarian algorithm that actually cannot be written in analytical form and contains non-differentiable operations. This essentially means that it's not possible to train trackers to optimize performance with respect to MOTA and MOTA P directly, as we cannot pass the gradients back to the tracker through this um, matching function. Because of that reason, community was so far resorting to all sorts of proxy losses that did not directly correlate with MOTA and MOTA P. And actually, the main motivation behind this work was to bridge this gap. 
So because Hungarian algorithm is not differentiable, we propose in this paper a novel, novel network layer that learns to establish matching between such two sets. This network essentially replaces the Hungarian algorithm by a differentiable approximation and provides a soft approximation of the optimal prediction to ground true assignment. What is really important here is that this module is differentiable and allows us to propagate gradients back to the tracker network. Based on this, we devised a novel deep mod loss that approximates MOTA and mod P and is expressed as a differentiable function of the distance matrix and the estimated soft assignment matrix. So let's see now how this is done. So of course, overall, we assume that we have a deep multi-object tracker and at least part of this uh, deep multi-object tracker should be trainable. As an input, this tracker receives a sequence of images and it outputs a set of track estimates. These estimates, together with ground truth boxes, are supplied to the DHM, so Deep Hungarian Network, together, uh, together with ground truth information. Then DHN, establishes a soft matching between these two sets. <clears throat> then it passes these estimates to the lost module that computes gradients needed to update the tracker weights. So first, let's have a look at how exactly this DHN module works. So what is important here is that DHN must be able to accept matrices of varying sizes. This is because, of course, we have a varying number of tracks and ground truth, truth objects from frame to frame. At the same time, the output matrix produced by this network has to have same dimensionality as the input matrix. Because, of course, of course we, have, we are here talking about establishing distances and matches between, between the same number of objects. So design of this network module is inspired by Hungarian algorithm that performs sequentially row-wise and column-wise reductions and zero entry verifications. And inspired by that, we take distance matrix and then first fl flatten this matrix. And then we fit this matrix to be directional recurrent neural network that first computes row-wise hidden representation. Intuition behind this is that this helps us obtaining intermediate row-wise assignments. Then we flatten this hidden representation column-wise and then pass it to the second bidirectional recurrent URL network to obtain final assignments. To get back to the input size, we use fully connected layers along the hidden dimension and finally use sigmoid activation function that, to ensure that outputs are between 0 and 1. As a result, we obtain soft assignment matrix of the same size, size as the input distance matrix. Now we need to express the loss function as a function of the distance matrix and computed soft assignment matrix. So let's have a look on how to do that. Okay, so let's start with uh, some intuition. So we first compute a distance matrix, we fed it to the Hungarian net, and we obtained a soft assignment matrix. And now let's first think a bit about this problem. So you can imagine that if assignments are below some threshold, then we either have a false positive or a false negative. So this means that if certain track X doesn't have a uh, match in the, ground, in the set of ground truth objects y, then we have a false positive. On, this, on the other hand, if certain ground truth object y doesn't match any track, then we miss the target and we have a false negative. So to count false positives in a differentiable way, what we can do is we can append a column to assignment the soft assignment matrix that is filled with some base threshold value. 
then we can compute row wise softmax. If after computing softmax entry in the extra column will be close to one, this is signaling that we likely have a false positive. Otherwise, the element with the largest value in each row will be close to one, signaling that we have a match. And this now means that by summing over appended column will give, will give us a soft estimates of number of false positives. We do pretty much exactly the same to count uh, number of false negatives. Of course, in this case, we will append uh, a row filled, filled with uh, this uh, base value and we will perform column-wise softmax. By summing over the appended row, we will get a soft, soft approximation of number of false negatives. We are almost done. We still need to count the number of IV switches. This is actually a bit tricky. So when frame-to-frame -frame assignments are consistent, then there will be no ID switches. So to count number of correctly predicted identities, we could do the following. We could compute previous frame through positives binary mask. So entry of one signals are through positives in previous frame and entry of zero signals that um, there was no true positive. We could then multiply this matrix with soft assignment matrix and uh, in the current frame. And this would give us a count of correctly established matches. Of course, we would need to account for newly appearing objects and insert um, in, and add rows to this matrix where necessary. So to compute number of ID switches, we can then do the following. We compute a binarized true positive mask over previous frame assignments. And now to get a count of a number of ID switches, we will invert this matrix. And then by multiplying this inverted true positive matrix with soft assignment matrix and computing L1 norm of this flat matrix, we will get a soft estimate of number of ID switches. So now putting everything together, differentiable MOTA is then very similar to uh, MOTA. We just, just replace false positives, false negatives, and ID switch counts with their soft differentiable variance that we just discussed how they can be computed. And in addition, we have here a weighting factor that allows us to incur higher penalties on number of ID switches. Differentiable mode P is expressed as a norm of flattened matrix obtained by multiplying true positive masks uh, mask with a distance matrix divided by number of false positives. So, so uh, this is actually very similar to MOTA, oh, sorry, to mode P, where we um, essentially sum intersection over unions between, uh, between these two sets, so tracks and ground truth objects. Um, and then we normalize this by the number of true positives. The final loss is then just a linear combination between, uh, of, uh, of, these two, um, uh, of these two functions. So the question now is, of course, does this work? To show that it does, we train several deep uh, multi-object trackers using this framework, including state-of-the-art tractor. And we could consistently demonstrate that via training trackers using frame or framework, we obtain better MOTA, mode P, and we reduce, reduce number of ID switches. So we could also show that this approach is better compared to a baseline loss that does not establish matching between these two sets explicitly and thus cannot penalize number of ID switches. As you can see here, this approach yields higher number of ID switches compared to a variance trained using uh, our loss and thus yields lower MOTA. This experiment here shows that every component of the final loss contributes to the final performance. 
So here on the top, you can see a vanilla tractor, performance for vanilla tractor. Then here you can see performance um, that you obtain using our baseline loss. And uh, then here we, we first take only the mod P term of the loss, then only uh, mota term of the loss. And I think that these two last entries are interesting because in uh, the last entry, we train method with our full loss. And uh, in the entry before the last, we take away the ID switch penalties, penalty factor. And as you can see here, this immediately results in higher number of ID switches. And of course, consequ consequentially, lower MOTA. Finally, Tractor that was trained with our differentiable framework actually established a new state of the art on MOT challenge benchmark in time of um, paper submission. So takeaways are the following. Beeper tight matching can be learned and it can be computed efficiently using GPUs. Furthermore, it can be used as a building block in neural networks. But what is, I think, most important here is that with this work, we actually pave the road for optimizing future deep multi-object trackers directly for the measures that are used to evaluate multi-object tracking performance. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>